Hello, my name is Connor Quinlan, and this is a part of the series of landscape photography. And in this particular review on landscape photography, I'm going to be talking about the equipment I use and the equipment you might want to get for landscape photography. What basically what works well to take pictures of landscape. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the camera that you might want to get. And landscape photography is pretty much like taking pictures of still life photography. You don't need a fast camera or fast autofocus or anything like that to get a good picture of landscape. Um, in fact, a Nikon D40, the cheapest of Nikon digital SLRs, will work just fine. Even compact cameras um, can take pretty good pictures of landscape photography as long as you know how to set up your camera. And to see how to set up your camera, um, you can go to my review on setting up your camera. And Now, I particularly have here the Nikon D300. This is the camera, the only camera I own. It's the camera, of course, that I use for landscape. Now, of course, the D300 is a fast camera, and you do not need a camera like this in order to take good pictures of landscape, like I said. The reason why I have a D300 is because I also take pictures of wildlife, which do require speed. And that's the main reason why I own the D300. Another camera that I like to use, especially for serious work, is my film camera that you see here. This is a Nikon F100. And the reason I use a film camera for my landscape photography, as well as digital, is that it allows me to have a full frame and it allows for a lot more resolution than the D300 can offer me. With a 35mm slide film from the F100, I can get um, well over 20 megapixel images. Um, basically stuff that is um, matches the quality of the Nikon D3X and even exceeds it in some cases. Now, for those of you who don't like film, Nikon FX cameras like the Nikon D700 or the Nikon D3X are also exceptional for landscape. In fact, those are the top choices for landscape photography because of the amount of resolution they have. Landscape um, photographers tend to like to print their um, pictures very large, so they use larger megapixel cameras like the Nikon D3X or film cameras like the Nikon F100 or even bigger format film cameras like 4x5 film formats or medium format cameras in order to print really large prints of landscape images. And that's pretty much a basic overview of the cameras that you can use for landscape photography. The next thing I'm going to talk about are lenses that you're going to use for landscape photography. Now, of course, the types of lenses you can use are pretty much endless, but the basic lens that you're going to need um, is a wide-angle lens. Lenses like the Nikon 18-55mm, to 55 millimeter, which is the cheapest of the Nikon lenses, and in fact, um, comes as a kit with the Nikon D40, is actually pretty good for most beginners for landscape photography. It gets pretty wide and can zoom in pretty close as well. And, of course, since landscape photography, you want to have a sharp depth of field. In other words, you want to have them. Um, a uh, completely sharp image, you use um, smaller f-stops like f-stop 8 or 11 or 16. Um, even on lenses like the Nikon 18-55mm, that will give you very sharp results. Of course, for those of you who are more serious about landscape photography, and for those of you who own a DX camera, a lens like the Nikon 10-24mm to 24 millimeter would be good to have because it allows for much wider angle photography and it's also quite a bit sharper than your average kit lenses. For those of you who own FX cameras or film cameras like I have here, um, a good serious lens for landscape photography is the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter lens. It's extremely sharp even at the largest f-stop and it gets you really really wide angles. Now of course you can use lenses more in the mid zoom range even up to telephoto zoom range. The amount of lenses you can use for landscape are endless but for most cases, a wide-angle lens is definitely needed for landscape photography. Finally, the last piece of equipment that I'm going to talk about here is a tripod, which is extremely important to have for landscape photography. In a lot of cases, when you're taking pictures of landscape, you're using a small f-stop and a really um, low ISO, so you're going to get a really slow shutter speed. In order to keep your image from blurring, you want to use a tripod like I have here. Now, what I have here is a Gitsu GT1530. It's the smallest and cheapest of the Gitsu tripods, but the reason I love this tripod so much is because it's really, really light because it's a carbon fiber tripod, and it's only got two other extension legs, which means it doesn't take forever to open and close all the time. 
The reason I have um, a more expensive model of tripod is because I use tripod a lot of the time and I use it in very cold weather, even in water sometimes. I've completely submerged this tripod almost at times. I use it in zero degree weather. I use it in very hot and dusty conditions and I wanted to have the best quality um, so that um, this tripod could last and take that kind of, those kind of blows from nature. Of course, really cheap tripods work very well too, as long as you don't um, treat them too badly, like I have the Skitsu. Skitsu has a lot of scratches and a lot of uh, marks all over it because I've used it very well, yet even with all those marks and stuff, it stood the test of time and it's still very strong and durable. Of course, like I said though, cheaper tripods like Manafrotos or even really cheap tripods that you can just get from your average store work well too. It depends really what your budget is. The next thing of course that you want to have on your tripod is a ball head. I just have a normal Manafrotto ball head. It's a 488 RC2. Pretty large and can hold a lot of weight. And this basically just screws into the top. of the tripod like that. I have a clip on the bottom of one of my cameras, I snap it into the top and I'm pretty much ready to go. And the reason I don't use a Gitsu ball head, like you might be wondering that, is because I really don't see much of a difference between the Manafrotto and Gitsu ball, ball heads. The Gitsu ball heads are a lot, lot more expensive, um, probably four times more expensive than this guy right here. And I find that the Manafrotto ball heads are plenty tough enough for any job out in nature. And that's pretty much all the equipment that you really, the basic equipment you're going to need to take pictures of landscape photography.